we have a quick follow-up video. I may have uh, released the last video a little bit too prematurely before I fully tested this, so I went ahead and uh, went ahead and added a switch. And uh, what the switch was doing, the switch was interrupting the power to the GPS receiver, and I went to go check if the firmware update still worked through the normal serial port to the Motorola processor, and unfortunately it did not. So there was a, a problem with this design. So we need to have a switch to you know turn this GPS signal off so that it does not interfere with the normal serial port when we want to update the firmware. Uh, interrupting the power to the GPS unit is not enough to do the job. What we had to do actually was interrupt in that last video I had a little red jumper here that was taking our signal into the uh, into the input of the RS-232 transceiver. Well that little jumper needs to be interrupted. So that little jumper wire from pin 7 to pin 13 on the uh, on the RS-232 transceiver chip uh, that's what I've run through the switch here. So I've gone ahead and run this to the switch so when you flip the switch it just basically interrupts the the GPS serial signal and that's all it takes right now to get it, things working. Um, if I had to do this over again what I would do is I'd, I'd actually get a double pole switch. This is a single pole switch and only interrupts one wire. If you have a double pole switch I could interrupt both this 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 jumper wire we had here and I could interrupt the power to the GPS receiver. It's not the end of the world having the GPS receiver running all the time so really now all it is is when I want to when I want to, want to interact on the normal serial port to the Motorola processor to do things like modify firmware and control the telescope from my computer. I just need to flip the switch, and I will interrupt the GPS signal, and everything will be just fine. Um, remember, you only need you only need the GPS signal during the first you know one to two minutes of startup, and after you've got a GPS locked in, and after you enter your your coordinates and your time, then you you no longer need this GPS signal to be running. So it's totally fine to power it off or to just to interrupt the signal. But just to make sure you guys understand, in order to get this implementation to work, we have to be able to interrupt this jumper that we had from, from, pin, from, pin, um, from pin 7 to pin 13. There was something with that jumper that was pulling down, it was pulling, you know, it was pulling the data line low. So no data was getting through. So we just have to interrupt it and everything's fine.